Welcome to Photoshop Tips from the Digital Transformer. I'm Dennis Dunbar and in this session we're going to look at a technique I've developed for finessing layer masks using the Dodge, Burn, and Blur tools. Layer masks are among the most useful tools available in Photoshop. They can be used to control what part of a layer shows up and what part is hidden. Without them, my work as a retoucher will be much more difficult. While there are lots of ways of creating layer masks, it's almost always necessary to zoom in and check the edges of the mask to make sure they're just right. For instance, sometimes the mask might show a border around part of the image, or it might be too soft or too hard. As a mentor told me a long time ago, the edges of the mask are the most critical part if you're going to have a professional looking image. This technique helps me move quickly as I work my way around the edge of the mask, adjusting it so it's working in just the right way. Here's an image that makes for a great example. This photo of Laura Burns from Pinup Girl Clothing was shot by Rick Miller from Adobe. It's a classic pinup shot. Now just for the sake of demonstration, let's suppose we needed to strip out the photo of Laura so it could be placed against another background. As I mentioned earlier, there are lots of ways to make the initial layer mask. Some folks like to use the quick selection tool, some like to use the brush tool and paint the mask by hand. My preferred method these days is you should make a path with the pen tool and then turn that into a selection that will become my mask. For the sake of showing this technique, I've already made a path around Laura and the sole she's perched on and turned that into a layer mask. And to make sure you can see how this method works, I purposely made the edge of the mask a little too soft. Now to begin, let's click on the layer called Mask Layer. This layer has the rough mask already in place. And to see the effects of the layer mask, let's turn on the layer below, the one called White. Now let's zoom in a little bit and take a close look at our image here. You can see the mask is working fairly well, but we do have a bit of the border showing up through here. This is caused by the blue from the background bleeding through the soft edge of the mask. You can see here how the edge of the mask is a little too soft around here and it's letting our image bleed through this little edge here. So we want to get rid of these borders around here. Looking around here we see it's affecting the image more in some places and less in others. It really needs a lot of work around here around the leg and the foot and the shoe here. We really want to do a lot of work on here. So before we start to work we're going to make sure we've clicked on the layer mask and not on the layer itself. You know you clicked on the layer mask, you're working the layer mask when you see this little board around here. I wish Adobe made that a little more apparent, but we have to look carefully to make sure we have the layer mask selected here. Now we're going to go to our burn tool and select this. Now the burn tool is going to work by making the dark values in the mask darker, while the dodge tool works by making the light values in the mask lighter. So we have our burn tool selected. It's selected to work on the range for shadows because we want it to push it all the way to black. We have our exposure set for 60. We can push the exposure level up or down depending on the amount of taste we want, how fast we want it to work, and how quickly we're going to work with this. For right now, let's leave it at 60 and just start to work. Again, double checking to make sure we're working on the layer mask, not on the layer itself. We'll start to brush around here and you can see what happens without having to be too careful about how I'm overlapping the image we're able to work very quickly around this mask here and bring the edges of the mask in and tighten it up around our image. If we click on the mask to show you what's happening and look at this part here, you see we're actually, as we brush with the burn tool, it's darkening the darks and bringing them closer to black so we're sharpening up this edge in the process. If we go to the blur tool here now, to soften things up, you see how working over with the blur tool brings some of that back. But because we darkened it up and moved the edge in, when we go with the blur tool, it's going to not come out as far as it did before. So by bouncing back and forth between these two things, we can actually creep the mask in and work on getting just the right amount of edge quality we need. If we've decided that we've gone in too far, we brought our mask in too far from this, then we can switch over to the dodge tool which is going to make the lights lighter and we can use the dodge tool as you see around here to bring the edge of the image back out. So we're actually shrinking our mask a little bit and allowing more of the image to show through with the dodge tool. With the, burn, with the blur tool we're softening up the edge. Now if we come back over here with the burn tool you see we actually bring this back in. Let's switch back to our image again and, and take a look at this. Now you see here we have actually brought the edge of the image way out too far. So we're going to work on it a little bit with the soft, soften it up with the blur tool. We're going to brush over here a little bit with the burn tool. And you see very quickly we brought this in. Now if we were going to use a brush 
to do this, like with the airbrush, we had to very carefully trace around the edge of this thing very carefully to make sure we got just the right uh, edge quality happening and we were including just the right parts of the image and, and masking out just exactly the parts we needed. By using the dodge and burn tools along with the blur tool, we're able to move very quickly around here and get the effect we need without having to be quite so careful. Now as I work on this, and we're zipping around here and seeing how quickly this makes, one of the things I um, you know is a lot of you are going to be thinking, well what about the Refine Edge tool Photoshop has? The Refine Edge tool is really great. It gives you a lot of control for playing with the feather of the mask, for bringing the mask in or expanding the mask out so you see more of the image, but it works on a global basis. And here with this method we're able to go around section by section and make sure that we're working on the image and getting it to work in each little area of the image. What's going to happen is, as you see with the photograph, it's going to need a little bit more shrinking in some places, a little softer edge in other places. We're going to have to work on this selectively, section by section, so that we make sure that each part of the image is working just the, the right way. So you can see we can move here really quickly, zoom around, and you see how fast this method works. For the most part, I'm usually using the dodge tool. I mean, I'm usually using the burn tool to uh, go in and, and make this work. Sometimes I use the dodge tool, but most of the time I'm using the burn tool because that is bringing the edge of the mask in closer to my image and allowing me to quickly finesse this and get just what I want. So you see very quickly we're able to go around this shot of, of Laura, clean up all the edges of the mask, and wind up coming up with something here that's going to work pretty well when it comes to compositing the image against some other background. So that's the tip for the day. We've used the dodge and burn tool to control the edges of our mask along with the blur tool to soften up the edges of the mask and allows us to give to use a really quick control and move around our image very quickly. So that's the Photoshop tip for the day. Hope to catch you all for the next one. Thanks a lot.